today is to build upon that introduction that we did the other day. And it really is about you designing practical, applicable sort of approaches in your classroom. So I'm going to give you a range of different points of view to look from as you design uh, activities or structures or habits and rituals that you're going to embed into your classrooms, okay? So um, the intention is that at least from the different exercises, you take one from each of the ideas that we take away, okay? So over the length of it, you probably have a lot more than one, five, ten in the time that we have in nine minutes. In fact, as I've been doing this over the last couple of days, I've been discovering that I've got probably a day's worth of places to look from because we spend a lot of time discussing and sharing ideas. So where I'm going to begin is in the area of teacher structures. And as I said yesterday, or Wednesday, you're always building. You're always building learning mindsets. Mostly it's unconscious, sometimes it's intentional. So one of the places where there is to look inside of this is that you want to consider that we've been operating inside of an educational paradigm that's been around for about 200 years that whole industrial age paradigm. And inside of the thinking of that particular paradigm, in that the way that we've been taught, we've grown up, the parents have grown up into the paradigm, that we actually have a, a range of unconscious habits and structures in the way that we think about things. So, you know, things like there is a curriculum and that we have to focus on teaching content. The discussion that we're having in the English today is really what's most important to achieve in standards. Because what's the end goal, really, is what we're really interested in. You know, teaching to the middle of the class. So sometimes, you know, we spend a lot of time with those who are less competent in the classroom, but we really challenge the more highly competent students. And that's a function of the actual paradigm that we've been operating in, the systemic structures that we have, the unconscious conversations that we have, the unchallenged thinking and approaches. So what I'm going to have you do right up the front is actually... Start looking at what are your unconscious habits or even what are your current intentional habits. And as a group, to discuss and look at, okay, and honestly look at, how do I run my classrooms? What sort of, how do I plan and design the language that I use, the conversations that I have? In the English um, Australian curriculum meeting we just had, we were, one of the teachers was sharing about, oh, I came in with a particular intention and saw that the students weren't ready for that conversation, so I know, knew that I had to focus on developing them over there first before I could even begin that conversation. But it was a very intentional way that he led the classroom rather than, no, let's just plow ahead. Because, you know, one of the unconscious activities might be that when you get in the classroom, I just have to get through the material. And then you'll have habits that go along with that, right? So, discuss, someone be a scribe and capture what's the some of the habits that you have. By the way, I'm not judging and assessing whether they're bad or good. The question is, what does it build? Is it building what you want it to build? And is it an intentional or unconscious habit? Because fundamentally, you cannot give away something that's great unless you distinguish it and it's an intentional sort of thing. Okay? Give you a few minutes to discuss that. Go ahead.